Hello, uh, we're looking at a specimen of a pair of lungs. Here we have the right lung with one lobe, middle lobe and, and the lower lobe, and the left lung with the upper and the lower lobes. Centrally, we have the heart and we have some very enlarged lymph nodes. Now, uh, looking at the size of this uh, pair of lungs, it is actually rather small. You can see that the scale only goes up to about 9.5 centimeters. So this is likely to be a child. Now, the most obvious abnormality is seen as this area in the upper lobe of the right lung, as well as these abnormal lymph nodes. Let's zoom in. In the upper lobe of the right lung, there is a well-defined but irregular area of discoloration, and this appears tan. It's paler than the rest of the lung parenchyma. Within this area, there is an even paler area that looks as if something has kind of fallen out. Here, this is what we call a friable appearance, like it's breaking apart, and this is usually indicative of necrosis. Now, looking at the enlarged lymph nodes here, we can just about make out that there are actually two lymph nodes, but the they seem to be stuck together. We call this appearance matted, matted lymph nodes, and this is very classical of TB. So when they see this abnormality, this pale area, it looks exactly the same as what's going on in the lung. So basically the same process is affecting the lung parenchyma as well as the lymph nodes. Now this uh, focus here of subpleural abnormality, this is called the GON focus, and together with the lymph nodes, this is called the GON complex. In primary TB, the root of infection is by inhalation. So what can actually happen is that either this uh, GON focus can heal and there can be a little small residual fibrous scar or it can spread. When it spreads, it can spread to other parts of the lung, it can spread into the airways giving rise to dissemination within the lungs or it can even spread into small blood vessels giving rise to widespread systemic dissemination and this would be called miliary TB. Miliary because you get little, little small foci of granul granulomatous inflammation uh, like millet seeds all over the body in different organs. So this is primary TB and uh, when it heals, sometimes there's latent infection within the lymph nodes and you can get a reactivation which can occur many years later, perhaps when the patient is immunocompromised. And this reactivation is known as secondary TB. It is not seen here, but usually in secondary TB, this is a cavitating process. And here is an example uh, of secondary TB where you can see that there is obviously an area of cavitation. Again, if I were to zoom in here, uh, this is an area of cavitation. So it's often a very necrotizing process in secondary TB because the body is has got already a previous immune response and recognition of the antigens in TB. So there's a very, very strong immune response mounted when there is a reactivation. And microscopically, uh, here are two lymph nodes that are involved by TB. Essentially, the process is the same as what you would see in the lung, and this would be necrotizing granulomatous inflammation. So I'll just show you a smaller granuloma here. A granuloma, if you remember in your chapter on chronic inflammation, this is a collection of activated or epithelioid macrophages. And we can sometimes see these Langhans giant cells and you can revise what they're supposed to look like. And not only that, in the center of some of these larger granulomas, we can also see these dark redder areas which represent caseous necrosis. So on microscopy, what we are seeing is necrotizing granulomatous inflammation. So just to recap, this is a case of primary TB with the GON focus and together with the lymph nodes forming the GON complex. This GON focus can heal and TB uh, infection can remain latent for many years and can later on be reactivated as secondary TB where this is predominantly a cavitating process or <clears throat> even from the onset after primary TB it can spread to other parts of the lung if the patient is immunocompromised or it can go into the bloodstream and spread as miliary TB.